let's have a look at implicit differentiation. First of all, let's consider explicit functions. Now, an explicit function is a function of the form y equals a function in x. For example, y equals x squared. Explicit because it has been solved for y. If we are required to find the derivative of such an explicit function, we would write dy by dx. And of course, this would be the derivative of x squared with respect to x. And that is simply 2x. So that's straightforward. But what now if we have an implicit function? For example, we could have a function of the form y squared is equal to x. What if we want to find dy by dx? Of course, we could say that's easily done. We simply rearrange this and write it as an explicit function. So y is plus minus the square root of x. And then we find the derivative, so that's easy dy by dx is going to be well, plus minus 1 over 2 times the square root of x. But what if we can't rewrite an implicit function as an explicit function? Now, in that case, implicit differentiation will help. Rather than giving you a more difficult example, I will start with this one, y squared is equal to x. So implicit differentiation works the following way. We have an equation given, in this case y squared is equal to x, and if the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, then so are the derivatives of the left hand side and the right hand side. So if I now try to find the derivative d by dx of the left hand side, that has to be the same as the derivative of the right hand side. The question now is, what is the derivative of this left-hand side? dy dx, y squared. Now, you can see there's a y squared here, and there's an x down there. And that's not really a nice match. So in the past, for example, looking at this, um, this exercise here, dx squared by dx, the derivative of x squared with respect to x, was simply the derivative. But here, we've got y and x. We have to match the variable first before we can find the derivative. This is where the chain rule comes in. So dy squared by dx, I'm just rewriting this in a slightly different way, is then going to be dy squared by something we can actually deal with. This something needs to sit up there again. And down here I'm writing my dx that we had at the start. So if I put in between the dy, I've simply applied the chain rule. So I now have dy squared by dy times dy by dx. I can actually find this first derivative. The derivative of y squared with respect to y is simply 2y, similar to the derivative of x squared with respect to x. But then there's this dy dx still sitting there. And we don't really know what it is. In fact, this is what we actually wanted to find in the first place, the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, this is only the left-hand side of our equation up here. So on the right-hand side, we had the derivative of x with respect to x, which is simply 1. So now the equation I have to solve is this one here. And I will rearrange. So dy by dx is sitting by itself. And on the right-hand side, I get 1 over 2y. This is the derivative of y with respect to x y by dx. But then you might say, what has this got to do with that? If we rearrange and start with an explicit differentiation, why is it not the same? Well, in fact, it actually is. Because y is actually plus minus the square root of x. So we can replace y here by plus minus the square root of x. If we rewrite this in a slightly different way, we get plus minus 1 over 2 root x, which is exactly what we calculated when we started with the explicit function. This was a very basic example. Let's have a look at something a bit more difficult. For instance, let's try to find dy by dx.
for x squared plus y squared is equal to 8. And let's then evaluate dy by dx at two points. First of all, at 2 and 2. And secondly, at 2 and negative 2. And we'll have a look at a graphical um, explanation for what we're doing in a moment as well. First of all, we're supposed to find dy by dx. And this is our equation, x squared plus y squared is 8. So if this equation is true, then at the same time, the equation has to be true if we take the derivative of the left-hand side and the derivative of the right-hand side. I might just put brackets around here to show that I'm trying to take the derivative of the whole left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I just get this. So the derivative of x squared plus y squared with respect to x. The derivative of x squared is simply 2x. But what about the derivative of y squared with respect to x? Well, this is something we've looked at a moment ago, but I'll just write this down again. We'll slow down a bit and um, do this in two steps. And on the right-hand side, the derivative of 8 is 0. So on the left-hand side, I have 2x plus this derivative of y squared with respect to x. Now, there's a y up here and an x down there. And that's not a nice match. So let's make sure we've got the same variable down there as we've got up here. So let's say we're differentiating with respect to y rather than with respect to x times dy dx. So we applied the chain rule. This is equal to 0. And that gives us 2x plus 2y dy by dx is equal to 0. What we were after is dy by dx. So let's rearrange this equation. And we will then get dy by dx is equal to negative 2x divided by 2y or negative x divided by y. This is part one of this question. Part two asked us to evaluate dy by dx at two points. So let's start with the first one. At 2, 2. dy by dx is going to be minus 2 divided by 2. So that's negative 1. Let's do the other one quickly. At 2, negative 2, dy by dx is equal to minus 2 divided by negative 2. So that comes to positive 1. Now, a quick graphical explanation is probably a good idea here. We're actually dealing with a circle. x squared plus y squared equals 8 is a circle. Let's do a rough sketch here. With a radius of the square root of 8. Or I can write this as 2 times root 2. Now, what we were asked to do is to find the slope of this circle, dy by dx, the derivative, at two points. The first point is here, roughly, at 2 and 2. The second point is roughly down here. That was at 2 and negative 2. So what we've calculated is the slope of the circle in this point. Remember, the slope is also slope of the curve at a point is also the slope of the tangent at the point. So in this case, at this point up there, we calculated the slope to be negative 1, and it does look like this. And if we look down here, the slope of the tangent at this point is the same as der the derivative dy by dx at this particular point, or the curve. And it is 1. So this is a graphical explanation for what we've just calculated. It's just the derivative, just the slope of a curve at a particular point. But we've calculated this in an implicit way, not in an explicit way, meaning we did not actually solve the equation for y and then find the derivative of y with respect to x. We uh, approached it by implicit differentiation by finding derivatives of the two sides of the equation.